Hey, it's Jade welcoming you to another one of The Current's virtual sessions. And today I'm so excited because I'm joined by St. Vincent and we're looking so much forward to the release of the new album, Daddy's Home. Uh, St. Vincent, thank you so much for joining us. Oh, thank you. Call me Annie. I, I don't. I never want to assume. Uh, call, call me Jade. It'll be very casual. But uh, I want to start off by first saying congratulations on Saturday Night Live. That is huge. Thank you. Uh, yeah, I was I was watching a video, and it must have been kind of a behind the scenes thing with you and the band uh, getting ready and kind of getting pumped up for the the performance. And I just as someone who is so desperate to be back and seeing live music, uh, I, I can only imagine what it was like for you to be back on stage and performing. And so I, I was hoping that you could kind of describe that, that feeling, that energy that you had. Oh yeah. Well, first of all, um, in getting to put this new band together and rehearse everybody, which we, you know, the, by the time we hit SNL, we'd been a, a band for about eight days. So <laughs> that, that shows you how, how pro everybody was. But um, just getting to be back in a rehearsal room with people and hearing them sing and hearing them play and just, I mean, it, it was like a phantom limb magically reappeared. It really the best so um and then actually the performance you know that's like there's not there's not an analog in daily life that scratches that itch you know uh, yeah. so actually getting to do that feel the energy of like three two one you know it was uh, the rush and the thrill and the just being in the moment and the crowd everything was um it was thrilling and it made me want to just why can't I just be on tour right now? You know? Yeah. Well, and I imagine. <laughs> why can't I? I why can't <laughs> Why can't we all just be on tour right now going to live shows? What's happening? I don't know why. Uh, but, but there is something about that uh, live performance. And you, I mean, you're such a, a, a wonderful live performer and the, the visual aspect is uh, so huge. And I was actually really stuck by the visuals of this performance, which kudos to you guys for pulling that together for eight days being a band. Uh, but there was this really beautiful softness to everything in the performance. And, you know, the, the I mean, the fur coat that you were wearing and uh, your backing vocalist, you know, everything just had this like softness and warmth. And it was really different from your last tour, which to me was really like sharp edges and that there was the starkness on the stage. And uh, it brought to mind this interview that I had heard with you where you said you had taken Angular as far as you could go. And I was really hoping that you could expand on that a little bit. Um, yeah. I mean, so much of this new record is like things that are wiggly. I mean, it's the only way to explain it, but um, really just things that kind of like move in and out like water and flow and really being way more about that kind of energy than about things that are right angles and clear lines. Um, and I think uh, the music that I was really referencing and really digging into was the music from the early 70s, New York, 71 to 76, um, where just rock and jazz and fusion and all this stuff kind of merged. And it was really harmonically sophisticated, but so musical. And so I was like, I, and and it was just uh, that kind of you know vibe. <laughs> I keep using words like vibe and flow, and you know, kept it's that very seventies. It is very seventies, but it's true. I just that music had a whole lot to teach me, and I've loved it for so long, but um, I never really, really gone there. And I, I just, I learned a whole lot. And the other thing about um, the performance aspect of of the record is with those singers and writing parts for the singers like I did on the record. I so wanted that to be like that's a conversation, you know. It's not background singers. It's a it's a real time conversation. I wanted to make sure that that was clear with them um, with the performance. You know, these aren't background singers hiding in the back making the lead singer you know seem more competent it's like no you're front and center we're having a conversation here you're very much a part of it and they were so great 
Yeah, it, it felt very like Bowie and Luther, Luther Vandross, sort of, <laughs> kind of that back and forth. Uh, but it was, uh, you know, you hearing you say the things about like the curviness versus the straight lines, there's this wonderful thing about like the visualization of music that I find so fascinating. And, you know, speaking of Bowie, that that idea of the the era and it being, you know, a certain look or a certain style and <clears throat> having to have those background vocalists as opposed to just, you know, Annie and guitar front and center. Uh, is that something that comes to mind when you're putting together the album or is like that visual something that comes after the fact? Um, when I'm making the record, I, I'm, I am more just thinking about the music and the visual side of it really kind of comes as a result. And, and during, once I know kind of what the music is, then the visual side can kind of start to bleed in and continue to tell the story. That's, that's kind of what I always want to do with the visual side is, is just uh, continue to tell the story of the album. Yeah. And it seems like you're kind of playing around with instrumentation as well. Uh, you know, mixing in some synth and everything else. Was that kind of like a, a kid in the candy store <laughs> energy going on? Or is it, do you always start with guitar when you're starting to write some stuff? Oh, no, I rarely start with guitar. Honestly, I really rarely um, sit down with a guitar and write a song. Um, I have, I think I have, I have better ears than I do hands. So <laughs> I just follow these. Um, but uh, as far as, are we talking record making or are we talking about live performance? Sorry. Oh, the, the record, making the record. record, record yeah. Making the record. Yeah. I mean, some of the songs came about from me turning knobs and plugging in CV cables to modular synths and just like doing this for an hour until something sounded cool and then taking six seconds of the thing and, and being like, I'm going to write a song around that. That's definitely how a song like Pay Away in Pain happened. Just, oh, cool. I found this modular bass line that is really evocative to me and I'm going to follow that. Um, same with the song. There's a record, song on the record called Down, which was kind of a similar process in that like just modular world. Um, and then a lot of things were way more. Um, it kind of went back and studied the harmony of you know Stevie Wonder, and Stevie Dan, and that kind of stuff, and uh, just kind of went back to school. You know, it's like damn, why does that feel so good when they go there? Oh shit, you know, damn, so cool. There's yeah, there's certain notes and certain runs of music that yeah, just kind of enrapture you. There's uh this this performance that you did of uh the melting of the sun and speaking of like kind of going back and giving a nod of appreciation to uh you know, people entertainers who've come before you. That's definitely something that goes on in that song. But there is a uh, a line that really stuck out to me. It's uh, to tell the truth, I lied. And there's been something in this last year, um, maybe it's because people are spending a lot more time at home, but that's sort of like the peeling back of the facade. And, you know, both in society in general with, you know, social uprising and the Me Too movement, but a lot of the musicians I've talked to uh, because they're not on tour, not doing the thing that, you know, really feeds them. It's been a year of like a lot of vulnerability and kind of asking those questions of, mm -hmm. you know, what, what am I doing and who am I? Uh, and that line just sort of um, triggered that thought in my head. And I'm, I'm curious what, what has been on your mind uh, in the, in the last year while you've had some time to kind of pause and reflect. Um. Well, a few things. I've gotten pretty mediocre at home improvement, so. <laughs> Congratulations. Thank you. I've really gone from bad to mediocre, so I'm pretty thrilled about that. Um, I mean, honestly, I, I guess sometimes I kind of take a long way around things. Um, and so I've just been looking at a lot of, a lot of history to try and figure out where we are now. And, um, you know, think about some of the, I guess, mistakes that human beings have made in the past as far as, as, far as history goes. And 
trying to go, okay, well, what's what's going on now? Is this, uh, how's this all going to shake out? And how does this remind me of these other, these other points in history? So that's kind of, I go the long way around a lot of times of trying to contextualize it and, and, and figure out kind of, okay, if, if a root of a lot of this is human vulnerability, people feeling scared, people feel, feeling unsure economically, socially, you know, all, all of the above, like you said, we kind of peeled back the veneer of a lot of the, um, the ideas of, of society and exposed like, oh wait, these are the real ideas that, that keep this matrix together. Um, I saw the matrix for the first time, uh, <laughs> speaking of, uh, did you like it? Did you enjoy it? Right. Some parts were a little too gory for me, but it was, it was great. You really ought to see it. You ought to see this documentary called the matrix. Um, it feels real. Yeah. But yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I think it's just, it's, uh, it, uh, yeah, that's, I don't know if that's, uh, I, I try to figure out where we are now based on what the what where we have been in the past i guess yeah and a lot a lot of that i mean i've only heard a couple of songs off the album so i don't want to you know extrapolate the entire thing but it does feel like there are some questions about you know who are we and what what do we uh what do we believe in you know the idea of struggle and who has to struggle and who doesn't have to struggle and um that sort of where we are at right now. And maybe that's not uh, what the album's all about. I should probably just ask you, what is the album oh, yeah. really going into? Well, I mean, that's definitely, that's definitely a big, a big part of it. I mean, I, I wanted to write um, stories about flawed people doing their best to get by. And um, I could write about it because I've been most of the characters on the album, you know, whether it's the the girl on the morning train with her heels in her hand, you know, from last night, you know, um, or the, you know, the girl at the holiday party who's been on one, you know, you know, people are looking on in a little bit of horror and um, concern. Um, yeah, I basically, I really just wanted to write about the human condition with not a lot of judgment. Um, I don't feel a lot of I'm more in a place of just trying to understand what's, why we are where we are, what people are feeling, what are the things that people are truly motivated by, um, to try and cut through some of the noise of it, um, and try to understand for myself, you know. But I could, I could truly like study the, the human animal forever and never be bored. I mean what we do, why we do what we do. It's, it's pretty endlessly fascinating. And again, I wanted to write about it without, without judgment, you know, just we're all here. There's, there's something I've been uh, thinking about a lot lately and it's kind of in that vein. It's the, the idea of family lore or these stories that we kind of tell about, you know, where we come from and uh, you know, it, it comes without judgment because you don't judge yourself. You kind of make it maybe into a joke. Uh, I mean, for example, my family, the first thing that you find out if you're ever going to meet my family is that, A, we're Sicilian. So that's kind of a warning just in general. Mm -hmm. And then the second story probably told by my teeny tiny Sicilian grandma is that her father, uh, who was, you know, this booze hound bootlegger, uh, never, never murdered a man. He just stabbed him and he died, which is like, uh, story <laughs> that that I I love and I appreciate because it's that like the lens through which you see things and how you're able to describe like who you are and what you are in such like a simple story oh, and yeah. I'm I'm curious if you have like a family lore or a story that you have that kind of exemplifies your family. Um, there's the. I mean, there's a few, I have a really big family and most, a big part of it is Irish Catholic and the other part of it, um, my mom's side were just these angel freaks. I mean, they were 
part, just a really bizarre kind of brilliant, very strange kind of crew of people who they, I, my, um, my great grandmother, his name was Stella Frankenstein. And she was a Jew who escaped, uh, and uh, God, and then my great uncle was um, uh, was one of the lawyers at the Nuremberg trials. Whoa! And then, yeah, and then my mom and her brother are just these like really like kind in a way that is shocking and super tap geniusy people, and then there's like the ragtag group of misfits on my father's side. So I guess, um, yeah, I would say if there's a, God, if there's a family war, um, I mean, my mom used to sing to us girls. She would say, uh, we girls can do anything to the tune of the Barbie theme song. <laughs> I'm, not, fa- I'm not familiar. Uh, we, we girls can do anything, right? Dana? You know, um, but anyway, the Barbie theme song. So that was, um, I think, her, her second wave feminist um, way of infiltrating, you know, our, infiltrating the mass media marketing. Um, God, I'm sorry, I just rambled, but it's a, it's a funny mix. It's definitely a, it's a, it's a funny mix mix my mother and father very different kinds of people so we all the the three their children all have very uh a kind of complicated mix of just angel genius and madcap yeah, <laughs> and so, and irre- irreverent um you know god i'm not being very articulate right now i apologize i'm still i'm still kind of tired because i played the show called snl this weekend so it's like <laughs> <laughs> i know i i feel like i'm taking you right at like almost the hangover of a <laughs> of a beautiful beautiful evening I, uh, it's, not, it's, 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 it's not actually uh like a, a, a hungover party hangover it's like a, a mental exhaustion which is usually i can really rattle these things off a little better. So my apologies. I think, I think you're doing fabulous. Don't, <laughs> don't pressure yourself. I'll get, I'll throw an easier one at you. Who was the first person you played the album for, uh, after you finished it all up? Um, maybe it's not an easier one. The start to finish, I I definitely sent my sister the album um, when I thought I had sequenced it, and then I went back and resequenced it like three times. So maybe my sister is she sort of the person that you typically send things over to to just kind of see? Oh God, how everything went. Oh God, <laughs> my favorite band is Huey Lewis in the News. No, I I, <laughs> I just happened to send it. Uh, happened to send it to her um (laughs) what was her what was her feedback what did she say was she like this this does not remind me of Huey Lewis in the news yeah she's like if it could be a little bit more like uh like Huey Lewis then I'd probably like it (laughs) (laughs) uh I just have one last question here uh you know with the idea of those live performances in mind and I I know I'm not the only person who's craving as, you know, people are starting to roll out their tour schedules and things again, uh, seeing that silver lining of game back out at the shows and with the Save Our Stages Act and everything mm-hmm. else that's happening. Uh, is there a particular stage that you uh, are just can't wait to get back and to be on and to perform at? Oh, man. Um, I would either say I would love to play Radio City Music Hall uh, or... <clears throat> and or I would love to play um, like a residency in a dive bar. I would be behind that a hundred percent. Actually with that band, that's such a dive bar vibe. It's so fun. 
just play like two sets a night a night guys like do it old school two hour sets two sets a night keep them dancing keep them drinking oh that's all i want i want to smell the dive bar i want somebody sticky next to me smell the dive bar Mm -hmm. and saint vincent performing I won't be satisfied until I can walk off the stage that is um, just a couple inches higher than the, than the audience and, you know, sit down at at the table in the front row, do a little uh, crowd work. Uh, I'm, I'm daydreaming about it already. Uh, Annie, thank you so much for taking time to, to talk with us this morning. Thank you. Uh, I will forever remember he stabbed a man, but he died as a result. He he was not murdered. No, the- yeah, no culpability. No. no culpability. He didn't murder him. No. Why would you say that? How dare you? How dare you? <laughs> not a monster. <laughs> uh, Saint Vincent's new album, Daddy's Home. It's out May fourteenth. Uh, Annie, thank you again so much for taking the time to mm-hmm. come and talk to us. You bet. Thanks, Jade. And thank you to our technical producers, Jesse Weiza and Derek Stevens, and our technical director, Veronica Rodriguez. And thank you for watching and check back for more of our virtual sessions.